Great to find. I've okay. been a bird watcher since I was a kid, so yeah. okay. All right, we're back. Um, we're just nerding out about bird watching because, like, Emily and I have gotten into bird watching recently, and we're like, why is this hobby like dominated by men who look like Bill Bailey, right? Like, yeah, and like, like old, older men, like, yeah, right? <laughs> like old, like this, this, like bird watching is Pokemon Snap, but in the real world, right? Like, yes, you get to go out, and, uh, you get to go out and <laughs> lop Pokemon Snap. That's what it is. Yep. It's so yeah, good. That's why. That's why I love Pokemon Snap and they need to remake it. And also, uh, talking to Bill Bailey, there is actually Britain's most famous bird watcher who I grew up idolizing is called Bill Oddie and looks a lot like Bill Bailey. Right, yeah. I think Bill Oddie's the one that I always I, I always think of the two of them as, as like a, a single person. Yeah. yeah. They basically are, yeah. yeah. They, they, <laughs> were, they were separated at birth, I'm pretty sure. Um. Cool. So one thing that I am going to do now is I'm going to post in the chat I've just posted a link to the discord server that we just set up for the channel um, because it now has a channel in the discord server for the instance which so that um, for those uh, those who aren't familiar with the latest version of in which we live and breathe during in between episodes we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a faction turn where the corporations the the, um, that we've come up with are gonna do their corporate bullshit at each other and like wage war against each other, which will have effects on the 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 community that uh, that the the players are a part of. So it'll create mm -hmm. shortages or abundances. Some people might get. Sometimes you need to abduct someone to commit to do some corporate research and things like that. So. Um, uh, if people are interested in that, jump on the Discord, and each uh, each week between sessions, we'll be doing we'll be doing that, and you can we can see who wins the corporate war. Um, but zooming back in, mm. is everyone happy with where their character is at? Is yeah. there anything else anyone needs to share? Have we all got our yeah. looks and hard limits and? All of those sorts of things. I don't have my. How do you choose your hard limits? Do you just pick okay. Them? So on your character sheet, um, there is a section uh, that says hard limits, capabilities, digital spheres, mystical spheres, and you can add them with this little thing that says add underneath. Yeah. And you, so you can be like hard limits such and such, or um, or mystical spheres such and such. So that's just a space for you to note those things down. Is there a list of hard limits I should choose from, or nope. should I nope, nope, like nope. how many should I have? Um, let me let me read the section on hard limits for you because it's cause, oh um, <laughs> sorry no 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 no, no. because because <laughs> like it, it's um it's it's helpful because like the 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 way I wrote it is I unlikely to say it as well as I wrote it um I know that feeling characters da -da 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 -da. look place hard limits. Your character might have one or more hard limits, such as PTSD, a scarred aura, or a missing limb. Sometimes your hard limits might reduce the number of dice you roll for an action. Sometimes you might not be able to perform a specific action at all without help. Don't trivialize your, your fucking hard limits. They're optional. You can choose not to have any. Sure, you're bulky and you don't like cilantro, but you know, uh, uh, and you don't know how to swim. But unless those are things that are actually messing with you, with, uh, with you on a regular, like messing with you on the regular, maybe hold off. We want a way to show how disability impacts our characters as real people in the world, and in doing uh, and um, and in doing that, it's important to respect the experience of those that deal with these issues in our own world. So, you can have hard limits. You cannot have hard limits. That's up to you. They are an XP trigger. So, if it's a thing that you feel like I want to, I want to show this in my char character's experience, then uh, then throw that in there. Otherwise, you you don't have to. Awesome. I came up with two after you read that to me. Cool. <laughs> Great. Cool. I also have two hard limits. Nice. Yeah. Two is the magic number. Yeah, yeah it's good. Too. Great. Awesome. Uh, what did you what did you come up with? Oh, who are you asking? <laughs> I'm asking Kira, because I think we've heard the other the yes. hard limits for the others. Oh, okay. I feel like I'm, I'm sorry. I missed um, Ray's, I think. Oh, I just, uh, the fact that soul and mystical is, is physically and mentally overwhelming. And also I have fatigue and fragility and use a drift chair when I need oh, to. Oh, right. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, cool. Mine are, um, I have a limp. Um, my one hip is bad from, from work. And um, uh, I don't like it when people tell me what to do. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> that, that's legit. I love um, it. The last thing that, that, that about constructing characters um, that is like, you know, how much you want to invest in it is up to you, but it's culture and belief. Make a note of the cultural backgrounds and belief of your character. How radical are they in their politics? How much of the narratives fed to them by corporate culture do they buy into? What kind of connection do they have to their ethnic heritage, if any? Do they follow a spiritual tradition? Players in GM are equally responsible for painting the world in which we live and breathe vividly with the colors and textures of diverse ethnicities, genders, abilities, and cultures. Don't accept boring and offensive tropes and stereotypes. Treat all characters in the game with the same, uh, with the basic respect of comp- uh, recognizing their complex humanity. So this is if you like, like if you are playing a uh, an indigenous character, how connected are they to that? Right, they might be. They might be like, "Oh no, this is really important to me," or they might be like, mm, "That's just like where I come from." I'm an extremely radical indigenous person that doesn't follow tradition. Sick. <laughs> uh, but I don't. Um, so I have a, an indigenous question. Because um, does this island have indigenous people, or is this a completely constructed island? I think it's completely people? constructed. Right. So there are no indigenous people here. So she must be an indigenous person from a near a nearby place. But like that... there are there are waters that have like indigenous peoples, right? Like, mm-hmm. like that's why I talked about like Polynesia, Polynesia, um, um, and like and Inuit and things like that. Are yeah. there are peoples that have very strong connections to their waters? I feel right. like we could we could have it where because the island has been drifting around for God knows how long, like maybe we've picked up various indigenous populations mm. as workers right that's like, what i was imagining. yeah right like that thing of actually <laughs> yeah of like hey there you person you're you you live here now um what's the name of the guy that was uh there was a guy that was a slave of magellan i think mm. who we don't have evidence that he did make the first circumnavigation of the world, but he was the first person to come really close because, uh, like he and he could have. We just don't know um, because uh, because basically, when Magellan died, he continued being on the same ship, and so like he yeah. Um, I'm gonna look it up. Um, so I feel like Polynesian might be a good fit because that feels yeah. like traditional water indigenous person. Yep. Um, like a, what? A what person. Yeah. What part of Polynesia? Because this is this... enough about Polynesia. Yeah, <laughs> It'll right. be a um, little bit like uh, it, it won't be a hundred percent accurate. It'll yeah, I suppose be... if then if if that's not a thing that's a big that's important to them, that's okay. Um, but yeah, um, I would. Like, I yeah. feel like if it's, for instance, if it's uh, Maori, then uh, I would be able to, like, work with that a bit because I'm, like, as an Australian, I am familiar with New Zealand. <laughs> uh, let's do that because uh, I don't, maybe you can, I don't know very much about any Indigenous culture, to be honest. Yeah, right, <laughs> so, like, exactly. To really dial down into it and um, yeah. be realistic. It so, might be um sorry no i'll let you finish your sentence first oh yeah no i think it'll be more of a depiction of like in in the future this will this yeah. is kind of what an indigenous person might be like yeah what they what their what their experience yeah, yeah. cool cool yeah, yeah I, I, entirely I, fictional just because we are all white and i and i want to make sure that we're not accidentally the thing that i'm avoiding is is calling polynesia a monolith um uh yes also uh, well it, it's hard it's hard to play people from different cultures or ethnic or heritage yeah and so it's like when you're a white privileged person in a role-playing game but i f- believe in representation i think we should yep, do it i i agree and i think that's the thing is like play it with respect and thoughtfulness yeah um, but no you were going to say something oh yeah this i mean it, this is not necessarily a a perfect solution but there might it might be less abrasive well i'm 
so in shadow right now um it, it could potentially be less abrasive playing someone sort of like multi like sort of several generations from when this population was first picked up that has gone through generations of like yeah. forced assimilation and and a yeah. stripping of culture which is a real thing that happens and is awful and um is uh, kind of gives you leeway to play a character who isn't super familiar with um with the culture as it exists today in a way that is a little more authentic um i can see ways in which that still could be problematic but it might be a more comfortable exploration of of that space um i agree with you i think that sounds great and um i have some some people who are in you know from indigenous backgrounds who are friends who have that experience who are just kind of like removed from their culture so i think that makes a lot of sense especially in this like super disneyified like i don't know plastic oh, fuck. there's totally like a, like a like a like a moana like fucking ride or some shit oh god um, yeah. yeah oh that's terrible yes that <laughs> makes a lot of sense sure um, the person I was uh, I was thinking of was uh, Henry the Black or Enrique of Malacca, um, cool. who is a uh, um, a uh, a Malayan Muslim uh, guy who basically yeah was was picked up by uh, picked up by Magellan halfway around one attempt, and then halfway around the next attempt Magellan died, but Enrique of Malacca like made it most of the way so like there's an argument that he could be the first person to have nav circumnavigated the globe cool um as yeah like as a as a as a slave officer <laughs> yeah totally um but yeah that was the thing the time yep all right cool so does everyone feel like their characters are um as fleshed out as they need them to be i think so cool 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 all right so um, the next thing we need to do is finish off our crew stuff. Um, so, where am I? Blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, that's right. We need to each... There was a section that we needed to look at for... Sorry, give me two seconds. Each person needs to create, an, uh, create or, or name... Uh, either create a new contact or name an existing contact that you're reliant on or one who is reliant on you and mark them on the community map. So, and then you work out what service that NPC provides. Um, so each person gets to basically create a member of our community. So you can see, um, I'll switch our view over to the map screen. So, that, um, so we have our hideout in the center um, and then we have, you know, different spaces on our map, uh, on our community map um, that we can put people in. So it can be like this. This is, you know, Doug's noodle shop, or things like that. So like someone that you're either, that either you are reliant on in your community or who is reliant on you. And then we basically do that again with the with our crew later on. I feel like someone who provides like necessary medical supplies is a a good touchstone for yeah right for are they violet like a, are, they, are they like a um like a like a medical supplies smuggler is that yeah i i imagine it's it's not on the up and up because that would just not work really i doubt we have the money for that let alone yeah. the willingness to further fund corporations so probably someone who like you know medical supplies fall off the back of a truck so to speak, yeah. and um, yeah, um, probably provides um, like the necessary the necessary supplies to actually be able to perform the like the work that Violet does to to help people. Yeah, cool. So we have yeah a um, a medical supplies smuggler. Do you have like a name for them and do you have a space on the map that you want to put them in? Uh, I will think on those oh, while right. other people come up with this. Mm -hmm. The great um, thing about the map is that when can, then we can like draw them in and be like, this is what their like little shop looks like. Cherry? 
Yes, I have um, a contact. I also just wanted to point out, Ash, that our contacts from and caught from our last game is at the bottom underneath our map. Is it? Oh, look at that. It is. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've just been using the same um, game because it's got all the like pre-coded stuff in it. Yep. Um, so my contact is um, a robot, surprise, surprise for people that know me, um, <laughs> who has gained sentience. Mm -hmm. They were a hospitality robot from, what was our hospitality corporation? Merry Mer Time. Merry Time. Yeah. So they gained sentience and uh, escaped their hospitality, which was like fancy hotel concierge. Mm -hmm. um, and now they run a kitchen for workers, like an underground kitchen. So they can yeah. be like our contact to like the workers of yeah. the island. Cool. I love this shit. This is real good. <laughs> awesome. I will think of a name. Yeah. And also, like, yeah, where do you want to put them on the map? Because you'll get to, we need to, like, draw a little kitchen in. Hmm. I feel like maybe uh, they're a distance from the hideout. They're not necessarily nearby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. I don't so know maybe if you can like right tell, but, like, I fucking love the quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like, right down at number 20. Draw on the map. Yep. Cool. 20. I like how it looks like an island. Yeah. Yeah. Like the intention is like uh, uh, is that it is vaguely through like the, the the map is vaguely three dimensional. So, um, like we get that verticality and complex shapes of our space. I kind of think that maybe the robot cook serves street meat. You know, like yeah, un uh -huh. undescribed various things that have been grown but also don't have sentience if that yeah. makes sense so like that meat but like it's out there scurrying around but without like it's just like this weird futuristic escaped sustenance i'm like, so uh, excited to see like, that in play like from, like from Arx and creek i don't know if anyone i'm not that. familiar but yeah like the idea of of like that grown like creatures that like are, are like yeah like grown to be eaten but then escaped is like yeah so they just like kind of run through these routines but as far as anyone can tell they don't necessarily have sentience yes yeah, so the, the first thing that i thought of was like the one episode of better off ted where they're just like we're gonna grow meat oh God, that yeah. isn't from anything and it tastes like sadness and then you described it as running around so now i'm just yeah. kind of imagining a pre-cooked meatloaf just like skittering about a room which is yep. horrifying and i love it i really it's straight it's straight out of oryx and creek which is um a margaret atwood science fiction who margaret atwood is frustrating real quick because she wrote science fiction and then she's like i'm not a science fiction author i'm i'm i i write literature and anyway so it's like this whole thing but <laughs> oryx and craig is a master a science fiction futuristic science fiction post-apocalyptic masterpiece cool. um, yeah like the idea yeah, that they're like that they've got this like meat the, the this thing that create that like they grow this meat but it's not uh that it's got that because it's made to be uh to be like just meat to be consumed it doesn't have a like a normal homeo box effect mm -hmm. um and so it doesn't know where fingers or legs or eyes are supposed to go it just sometimes has them and sometimes yeah. develops a neural ses uh, neural system that isn't like structured like our neural system is structured with a brain and then things branching out because that's what the homeo box effect says to do but if we have like meat that's being grown without a homeo box effect in its genetic code uh then like it'll just do whatever the fuck it likes yeah Whenever you and see, i think like, that's where in, in better off ted it came it came from like it came, the idea was kind of from that book and then like they turned it into comedy and i i kind of love that bridge yeah 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 yeah, yeah whenever you see like 
teeth or fingers or whatever growing where they're not supposed to. That's the failure of the homeobox effect. So, like, just a thing that has no homeobox effect is really interesting. Um, Kira, how are you feeling about NPCs? I want a driver. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, like, it could be... It could be like a mechanical robot driver. I don't know how we get around this place. Maybe there's like gerbil balls we travel in or something. I don't know. I, I like the, I I, I like the like idea of having like, pardon? Jurassic World. Jura like, oh, yeah, Jurassic right. That they had the gerbil balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like the I idea that there's so. that like there is a system that is like the public transport system, and then there are, um, and then there are like cars or helicopters or whatever or like futuristic versions of those things for that are yeah. specifically for your non-standard travel right because yeah. like, even like, when you have a really good public transport system you still sometimes need to go and fix the public transport system or you need to go outside of it or whatever yeah like an uber driver like yeah. um like a like uber like maybe i don't know maybe they fly maybe they're on the water i don't know there's lots of options maybe they're magical yeah I'm right they could be a, they could be a driver in that they can summon like fucking portals, right? They summon what? Say summon portals from like one side of the island to the other, right? And yeah. Like, I'm your driver. Here, go in the magical portal. Yeah, like a Doctor Strange. Yeah, situation. please remember to tip. <laughs> now I'm like, oh no, is is my character gonna have a panic attack every time we have yeah, to take right? the job? Oh no, it's possible. Like a person who just has like a they just a person who has like a fucking pet giant bird or something right yeah like, <laughs> or like maybe it's like a cyber bird maybe it's like you know yeah i can uh, definitely envision like those amazon delivery drones but for people like it just flies yeah, down right grabs you yeah with yeah yeah, yeah, and... yeah i was picturing that too snow so i think we should go with that yep. one <laughs> so they're, they're, a, they're like a quadcopter driver like yes yeah. Yeah, like a pod, like a yeah, a pod co uh, pilot. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, a driver type person um, who's like real cool and <laughs> like can break knees if you need them to, but mostly right. drives really cool. Like All that's right. their cool, 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 cool. Um, what's the word I want? I want like. Uh, are they played by Ryan Gosling? Yeah, of course. No, oh, like uh, <laughs> gender queer Ryan Gosling. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want that in real life, please. Yeah, me too. Have you, have you, have you seen? Gosling. Have you seen Drive? Um, oh yeah, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's who I'm picturing. It's like really yeah. quiet until they need to break someone's knees. Exactly. See, I'm thinking of Baby Driver. I don't know if anyone watched that. Yeah. So, okay, Baby Driver is what it is. Whatever the director's name is, I can't remember his name. Um, uh, he saw yeah, Scott Pilgrim guy. Yeah, he saw oh Drive, and he yeah. saw that one film clip with Noel Fielding. Yeah. Um, for the song, and just went, "Oh, I can make a film." Right. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's basically that's basically what he does. Yeah, I can't think of his name for for some reason. I'm thinking Ethan, but it's not Ethan. It's something else. Uh, the driver is one of my favorite archetypes in film history. There's actually like this YouTube video that goes over like where it comes from in the '60s, and it's real. It's real fucking cool. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Baby Driver was actually my favorite film that year. I just think it's such. I a yeah, it was, nice I enjoyed it. I was well. like slightly underwhelmed. I was because I was like, I can see what you're doing, and I and I think you missed this beat, this beat, and this beat, right? Which is but oh, like that, but that was because like. Like I five minutes in, I bought in, and I was like, "Cool, I get the concept." And then to okay, my the... favorite part, though. Oh, I'm sorry. And oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, towards the right. end, I think they they like just there was like a, a, a like a one or two moments of hesitation where they went off the beat, and it and it kind of like made me be oh, like, really? "Oh, okay." Interesting. But, I didn't get that, but I was like totally like fully Edgar enveloped it for me. Edgar. My favorite part of that movie was how they tied the soundtrack into the action. I thought that was a very clever. Yes, that was I, I that thought, was mm. that was the bit that 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 like worked for me. And then there were a couple of points where it missed, and that was where I was like, ah, oh, like agreed. Yeah, I liked it. Points. It was about seventy percent for me. It was same. okay. Same, same. Yeah, I, th I thought it was a good, very long music video. 
Yep. Much like yes. that Tron movie with the Duff Pog soundtrack. You're all, yes. we, need to, we need to change exactly the like that. <laughs> You're all breaking my heart. Oh, okay. We need oh, to stop talking, to fi- talking films. With, we need to stop having Ray. like Kira and, and Ray like talking films because they'll just end up hating oh. each other. <laughs> I lo- no, I love hearing opposing opinions because I feel like it's uh, something I wouldn't have thought of. And yeah. I like to hear that perspective. Yeah, yeah. And I love or hate the thing that I love or hate. It's um, Kira, the amazing thing about cinema is how personal it is to yes, everyone. Yes, definitely. Kira, um, I've I've just written the word aviators, as in like the sunglasses, because I think that's important. Um, <laughs> now I'm getting a Top Gun vibe. Um, <laughs> I like I'm I'm getting like aviators and uh, toothpick. Um, Starbucks maybe. Yeah, Starbucks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you want to put them somewhere on the map? Oh. How, what? How does this work? Just pick up like pick one of the <laughs> pick one of the boxes, um, and then like tell me the number, and then we can like when we've got when we're like doing stuff, we can just like draw them in there with like their quadcopter or whatever, right? Like, I uh, so just pick any any spot. It doesn't yeah. super matter which one it is. No, it's it like like um okay. the 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 cook is like you know physically it looks like down and a fair way from us, right? Like yeah. Yeah. And we're at the hideout. Okay, so the driver's like right outside the hideout. So like five. Yeah, five. Cool. Awesome. Because yeah. like anytime we need a ride, mm-hmm. that's where they are. Yep, sounds good. Catch a ride. Sorry, way too much. Bottle, bottle, <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> now I now this poor driver is just this like poor driver is album of like seven different characters. In yeah, just every, they are just <laughs> the driver, right? Like they are they are all. It's of the a perfect things. driver fantasy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Living awesome. the driver fantasy. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, so let's have a look. The at... robot, by the way, is just called Twenty. Like that this. is their name? All right. But spelled the word. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like that. Yeah. Yep. We can give the others cool. names as we get to them. So now that we have our contacts for our, like our individual personal contacts, um, let's have a look at finishing off our crew. So, crew type. Yes. Um, so your, our crew has three stats, which are rep, cash, and strain. So rep is like how well are we connected to our community? How well, like, how well favored are we? Can we like call on fav- uh, on favors and things like that if we need to? Cash is just mm-hmm. how much money and like, um, and like, so like, rep is community currency. Cash is larger society currency. Really, um, uh, rep is is about like favors and things, whereas cash is about like legitimate. Uh, um, currency and then strain is the measure of like internal tension within the crew so the stress of, so like all of the stress of each of the members um, and also like the heat that the crew generates as they're getting up to trouble is all contained in strain as a as a thing their ability to continue working together and being effective um, so um, for each of our three stats we need a d6 plus four to find out what our uh, what our maximum is? Um, does someone want to roll me a d6 plus four three times, or do we want to do one each? Do it. I believe yeah. in somebody. I, I like one each. Okay. Do you want okay. to do one first, Snow? Do you want to do rep? Sure. Cool. That's a six. Awesome. So that's ten rep. Fuck yes. Nice. Uh, slash R uh, slash R space D6. I was close. You nearly got it. One. We are not. Okay. Not much cash. So that's okay, cool. Well, on brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on brand. <laughs> um, so 10 rep, 5 cash. And do you want to do strain for us, Cherry? How, yeah. how well cohesive are we to start with? three all right so that's seven for strain now we get to adjust that a little bit by choosing some if we want to choose some descriptions for our hideout so um choose one or more to describe your crew hideout so this is like your space within the community um uh, so so this might be like 
maybe we occupy like a certain like a certain uh, ballroom or like conference room or something that is like this is our space for for us the crew um so we can choose somewhere crowded or busy which will increase our rep but uh reduce our strain um uh we can choose somewhere secluded and secure secluded and hidden so that'll give us less rep but more strain we can choose somewhere full of scrap and uh, or resources which will give us more cash but less uh, but less strain um, uh, somewhere abandoned and decrepit which will give us uh, less cash and more strain uh, someone execute somewhere expensive and upmarket which will give us more cash and less rep or um, a place that makes us a cornerstone of the community which will give us more rep and less cash cornerstone so, <laughs> cornerstone of the community so we're very central so we increase our rep further and our cash goes down further. I forget the, the other options though. Um, that just stood out to me as cool as maybe a fit. If I mean, Cornerstone makes sense if we're like building around like Violet's clinic, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which seems to be a, a central point for like why we're a crew. Yep, agreed. I, yeah, I kind of, I because I'm really, I don't know why I'm so attached to the idea of an old ballroom but like yeah. maybe the clinic is set up like in the middle of the ballroom mm -hmm. um like not necessarily even a ballroom but like a theater like an old like lab la like lush theater with oh, like yeah 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 and the clinic is on the stage like, yeah 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 that's extremely yeah. good yeah <laughs> yeah 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 um so does that give us so um if you're on the web web version just control f uh control f hideout and you should find that um uh, that title to see the the different options. If you're on the PDF, there should be a bookmark for it under crew. Well, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you on the PDF or the web page? Web page. Uh, uh, so control F hideout and uh, and you should be able to find it. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple of different options there. So basically you can choose all of them if you want that would let the, then they would all balance out but um you can just choose whichever ones you think are appropriate and you can just choose one or none or a bunch up to you as a team i think Let's if do, we're gonna yeah. go with cor cornerstone of the community it could also be busy not necessarily mm -hmm. crowded but like there's always people coming and going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it also sounds abandoned and decrepit sure yeah, it is all of those things. Yeah, well, as, as we those, established. Going to be those three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go through and do the math on those. So, I was, I was trying to get us a little bit more cash, but I think we ended up losing some. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. okay. Um, oh, um, Ash, I put in the remaining details for my contact in the the Zoom chat too. Ah, cool, awesome, so. great, thank you. Um, <laughs> Plus one max strain, so that's eight, and minus one cash, which is three, and then uh, crowded or busy, plus one rep. Oh my gosh, so much rep and minus. One. <laughs> we are super cool. Yeah, everyone that fucking are... loves everyone super... fucking loves you because you because yeah. you're, cool. you're the but doctors. we're so poor. <laughs> you're so poor. You are um, one of the really poorest cool. crews I have ever seen. <laughs> Um, awesome. For hi uh, hideout contents, for every three max cash your crew has, it gets one room or piece of equipment for their hideout. Hideout equipment can't be taken with you on mission, except if it's stored in a vehicle, which counts as a room. So, um, you don't. Um, hideout equipment does not reset at the start of downtime. Mark your rooms as connected spaces on the community map to the hideout. So well, this I think is things... we only have enough for one. Right? We have enough for one. We it could have gone down to two, and then had no com uh, no hideout contents. But yeah, do we 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 can we can add one thing onto our hideout. Whether we want to have like, I think it sounds like you probably want to have like a medical bay. Uh, sure. Connected yeah. to your like like so yeah. you actually have like tools and things for performing surgery or whatever. That's what it sounds like, but. Sounds you could great. instead be like, no, we, we want a jet. Right? I like, like the medical bay idea. Yeah. I mean, I can operate on the floor if I have to, so. Yeah, but like you, but you, but like having like, you know, uh, like a 
fucking CPAP nearby or whatever. Or a... An, yeah. A zchink, uh, that I forgot the name of. A defibrillator? A defibrillator and things like that is probably helpful. Like, that's what that, why I would call that. I think that's the best thing for us. I mean, we're talking about healing our community and, mm -hmm. you know, we are all kind of uh, broken ourselves. I think that's like a, the best, the best thing we could have. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, do we want to put that in space eight or nine? Because five is taken up by our quad captor pilot friend. Uh, I put uh, my contact in nine. So, so I guess that's, yeah, <laughs> and there cool. is that down. Cool. Uh, so nine is our medical supply smuggler, and eight is uh, eight is our like med bay. Cool, awesome. Um, and we can like draw this in as we want to. We can put like a little gurney there or whatever. Um, So then what we have, for every three max rep your crew has, create a solid contact or make an existing contact solid. Um, when you create, when creating your crew, you may put your solid contacts wherever you like on your community map. Um, you can mark more contacts as solid by getting good on, uh, on their good side during play, as well as each time the crew's max rep in, uh, um, reaches a multiple of three for the first time. So solid contacts um, are ones that you like, Contacts are people you know. Solid contacts are people you're like, uh, like, bros with. Um, let me find the better the community section so I can describe that a bit better. Um, some con some contacts are solid. Their services only cost one rep, and and gear purchased from them only costs one cash instead of the regular price of two, which no those things normally cost. So it's solid, solid just means they, they don't charge you as much. Um, so either we can create some new contacts or we can uh, we can mark some of the ones that uh, that we already have as being solid so that using their services is a bit cheaper. We have a lot of reps, so I think even if we... Let me have a look. 12, so we, have, we get to have four solid contacts. So... Um, if you want, I'm happy to help create contacts or we, um, cause like we have four solid contacts, so we could just like make our existing ones solid and then have an extra one. Is that what we're going to do? Or we could create that, that, contacts. That sounds good. I think. Mm -hmm. cool. I have an idea for the extra one. Yeah. Um, since we're all, I'm not going to say feeble, <laughs> but also. <laughs> What's a good word to describe us? <laughs> You're not going to say feeble, but you did say it. Yeah, we're we're a bit we're we're not physically the strongest crew. Yeah. Um, maybe we can have a arm smuggler that works at Kraken. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool that idea. Can get us weapons. Yeah, I love it. Um, where do you? Where it's like a bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, an arms smuggler. Um, and they still work at Kraken? I think so, yeah. For, they they have never been found out. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Um, great. Um, uh, do you have a s idea of like where they might be on the map? So on our map, we have our hideout, which is like the, um, which is, I think the like backstage section of this theater. And then eight is the like stage section with the, with the med bay on it. Um, and then, um, and then we have Ooh, sorry. nine is, uh, is where Dr. Derivative, uh, the lab coat wearing smuggler with jailbroken cybernetics lives. Um, um, and then five is like that. Uh, it goes to outside where like there's a loading bay for uh, for a quadcopter pilot to uh, to operate from. So we, we start to get a sense of the space as we build it up. Mm. Can our hideout be the orchestra bay underneath the stage? Fuck yeah, it can. <laughs> You're so into the ballroom. <laughs> Yeah. I'm really into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think maybe 16. Like, it's, like, in a totally different part of town. Yeah. Like, I feel like Bracken would be in, like, the fancy part of town, right? Right, cool. There's, like, a, um... Yeah, 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 cool, cool. Well, like, cool. the financial district or something. I mean, it's all the same hotel, so... <laughs> Like, oh, I see. This entire thing is the same hotel. Yeah, this is our this is our com this is our community. Um, oh, okay. So, so it's not the island. It's not the island itself. It's it's our community. The island is much bigger. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. They don't have to be on the map, by the way. They can be like someone that we go outside of our community to talk to. Oh, so if they're I think not on the map, they are outside of our community. Physically. Gotcha. Okay. Our community is a physical, is, is, is like defined by a physical space. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Maybe the arms smuggler should be outside, outside of our community. Cool. Yeah. For their own security more than anything. Yep. Yeah, yeah that, makes, that makes sense. More a corporate person. Yep. Um, I think what I want to do is have it so that like there's the map and then you also have like, a, just like a picture of like a mobile phone and so like the mobile phone is where you store these other contacts. That's good. Um, as long as it's not one of those dumb mobile phones that have a transparent screen with where you which just wouldn't work. <laughs> it's a flip phone. It's got to be a flip no a flip phone okay. or like a one of the ones that like slides <laughs> down from the matrix. The slidey one, yeah, this is, that's what I imagine. <laughs> My friend's dad had one of those, and he went through like three because the yeah. the spring on it that made it go right was so powerful that they would just shatter themselves over the course of about six months. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, my boyfriend in high school had one of those. It was yeah. amazing. <laughs> we were like, oh out. man, your dad's so cool, and then he'd just like be like, my phone's broken again. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, right. So we have, so they're all solid contacts. So like, yeah. Yeah. And like, we build up this contact map as we play, right? Like finding out about who else lives in our community, who, uh, and things like that. Cool, 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 cool. Um, what so else shall we create? Let's, yeah, let me, let me see if we've got anything else we need to do. For every three max strain your crew has, one corp gains a point of turmoil against the crew. So, how much max strain do we have? So that's just like we start the game with you having already made trouble for two for two of the uh, the corporations where they're always like they're all you're already a thorn in their th in their side. Um, I cool. think it sounds like maybe longevity and merry time have like because it sounds like we've got two people who've like bailed from those mm. um does that sound right to you yeah yeah that makes sense awesome wait who, who bailed from who i i, I bailed from merry time yeah. i definitely bailed from longevity yeah. so yeah. yep cool 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 all right so they've each got a point of uh, of turmoil um, they hired me anyway yeah so <laughs> That will affect how they get to play in the um, in the corporate game as well. Um, cool. When when the audience uh, is and and you three are welcome to join in the corporate game if you want to. That's that is fine. Um, cool. If you want to have like a separate character that you're that is like part <laughs> of the corporate world, up to you. Um, so that takes us through. Um, let me just check that I've done everything for. Uh, for preparing for trouble. Um, where is the move? Preparing for trouble. And if any corpse have turmoil related to you. That is the whole whole session zero stuff. Do we want to take a break and and like do some like quick adventuring or do we want to like leave it for today and come back to it and kick off with a, a proper uh, some proper play um, next week? How do we feel? How's everyone's energy levels? I could keep going or mm -hmm. quit. I feel I feel fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. Sure. I might slightly prefer to start actually playing next next week I was instead. Because you're not feeling well. That was the thing that I was wondering about. Yeah, that sounds cool to me. 
Um, does that work for you, Ray? Yep. I have oh. a quick question. Sure. I remember reading somewhere in the rules, I don't remember where, about personal relationships with contacts. Mm, let me have a look. Um, the section for contacts is uh, is under community. So let's have a look there. Um, you can become a con solid with a contact by either increasing your maximum rep or by doing favors for them. Um, yeah, it, um, when you create a contact, ask other players if any of them have other, uh, uh, or any other contacts have an emotional relationship with this contact. Um, yeah, so I, don't, that, I don't know if we can do that. That was just something that stuck in my memory. Yeah, no, that, and that's a really good question. Um, do, do we have any, like, really strong emotional connections to any of these, right? Like, uh, is anyone anyone's, like, father surrogate or, like... Uh, or like, you know, confidant or anything like yes, that. The, the driver is my ex. Oh yes, excellent, cool. <laughs> it's good drama. Love it. Cool. Anyone else have any that are immediately apparent to them? And we can find out about these sorts of things um, later on as we go. I feel like Twenty and I often get drunk and talk about how terrifying spirits are. Drinking buddies and ghost phobics. <laughs> how does a robot get drunk? I'm really I'm really interested in what the process of getting a robot drunk looks like. Play to find out I what happens. <laughs> I, I, it's probably got something to do with my hacking. Yeah. Okay. It's like a like a minor like EMP field or something that just yeah. like. Hmm. So. Yeah. Yep. My skills come in handy. Cool. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get get drunk and talk. Do you, so like you get drunk and scare uh, and share like scary ghost stories, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Love it. Um. Cool. Anyone else have any that they're feeling, or are we all good? I think I'm all good. Yeah, that sounds fine. All right, well then, um, let's do some shout outs, wrap it up. We'll do a faction turn before play starts, um, and then uh, and then we'll get into it, um, yeah, next, next Monday for me, Sunday for Americans. Um, so, uh yeah let's 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 do the shout out thing uh do you want to start ray um sure you get, you get the most experience have... at shout outs so <laughs> <laughs> um i have been ray or cherry you can find me pretty much anywhere on the internet as cherry ray um i stream monday to thursdays monday well monday tuesday wednesday and friday and um, I have got the most experience at these, but suddenly... Suddenly everyone goes blank. Yeah. Uh, Find me on the internet. I'm always around. <laughs> Except yeah. for when I'm not. <laughs> Except for when you're not. Uh, check out Cherry's <laughs> channel. They play some cool games and provide really good commentary and insight. Um, uh, Snow, do you want to do a shout out for us? Where can we find you on the internet and things like that? Sure, you can find my my Twitter at, at Snow McNally. I don't have any particular projects to shout out right now because I'm in the middle of, of long-term ones with no fun updates, but eventually you will see very cool stuff. So get in, get in early so you can say that you knew me before I was cool. <laughs> I mean, it's too late for that, but okay. Um... Cool. Uh, Kira. Yes. Hello. I'm Kira. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Kira Nanzi. It's Kira plus a Nanzi. That makes sense. And um, I'm a game designer. Uh, I have a Patreon, uh, which you can find linked at my Twitter. And I do like game design insights for like tabletop role playing games and LARPs. 
and um, also a design blog on YouTube. So both my Patreon and my YouTube are linked to Twitter, which is the easiest place to find all my stuff. Cool, cool, cool. You're, you're, uh, you definitely have the most aesthetically pleasing game design insight videos I've seen. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> It's Thank like, you. It's just intros with like some nice things with like trees and like uh, and things like that. I'm always like, yes, okay, I'm calm and ready to listen now. <laughs> My friend Leslie calls them uh, uh, what are they like um, like anime intros? Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like Totoro intros yep. type of thing. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, cool. Well. I've been Ash. Uh, I've been your GM and host. This is my channel, so hit the follow button if you have follow button if you haven't already. Um, uh, you can find me here on Twitch and also on Twitter, YouTube, um, uh, Instagram, Tumblr, all those sorts of things um, at a CGIAK, A C E G I A K. Um, this will be going. The vods for this will be going up um, uh, this week. And uh, there is a link in both the chat and also uh, the chat here and also uh, in the description of the VODs for the Discord so that you can join in and become part of the, uh, the corporate machinations of this game if you want to. Um, you can find this game in which we live and breathe on my website, acgiac.net or on itch.io. Um, other than that, thank you all for joining me this is really exciting i'm so excited about this world and this community and these characters that we've created i'm so keen to like to see them get see what happens when when it all gets messy um thank you chat for joining us and we will catch you later bye <laughs>